On today's Try to Finish Something, I first wanted to address the beginning of last week's video. I had a lot of comments about the intro and how personal I was sharing things in my past. And it's who I am and what I do. I try and find humor in everything. And everybody was very positive about it. They just thought maybe I was sharing too much. And there were just some of you that thought that. There were others that thought, hey, you should do a podcast and you should do nothing but that and just share those kind of stories about your past. And I may do that as well. I used to do a podcast a long time ago called the Sean Cash Podcast, and I may bring that back up and share some of those things. But last week's video, see, YouTube is a hard entity to try and figure out what to do to stand out from everybody else. And I relate it to when I used to do morning radio. And my morning show partner, Jeff, and I used to run a morning show, and we used to share a lot of personal information on that show. And we used to play the same songs as a lot of other stations in town, and you're always looking for something to stand out and be different from everybody else. And one of the things that we would do is we would share personal stories and bits about our past and who we were and try and find humor in that. So when I started doing a YouTube channel, I thought, I'm not that good at this stuff. I don't have anything that others can't offer, so what can I do to make myself stand out? And I'm approaching my YouTube channel much as I did my radio channel. And Hopefully, you come along for the journey and we'll figure it all out together. But this YouTube channel is a lot of fun and I'm really enjoying it. And I can no longer say that I don't have a job. Look at that. 53 cents. I have reached the point, thanks to you in YouTube, that my channel is now monetized. No, I, I can't retire and it's not like I'm just going to do this, but I'm really proud of that. It's 53 cents, but I am honored that you spend the time to watch these videos because these videos are full of warts. <laughs> and I can't think of another way to describe it. I watch Odin's channel and I watch The Smuggler's Room and I see Brian and Carissa and I can only describe it as cinematic. I mean, their videos are impressive. The, the way it's lit and the way it looks and I don't have any of that. I, I have terrible lighting and terrible videos and I just stumble my way through finishing a project each week and I really enjoy it and I hope we're all learning together and maybe one day I'll get to that point where I've got better equipment and better videos but I make a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes on this channel and hopefully you learn from those mistakes just like I do. It's all full of warts and <laughs> it's not always pretty. Oh God. Next week I'll show you my build room. It's a disaster. <laughs> That's got to get tackled. But on today's Try to Finish Something, I've got a build and I'm going to give you a secret. I didn't realize the weather is doing what it's doing. It doesn't go as planned. I've got a build that I'm going to do that's not going to work and I'm going to wind up doing a wall panel, a Star Wars wall panel. And that's what I'm gonna do on today's Try to Finish Something. So here is what I thought I was going to be working on. I was trying to frame out the nose of the Y-Wing that will eventually be coming through the ceiling of my build room bunker. I'm trying to find some good reference photos and trying to figure out some of the dimensions. I'm probably gonna have to cheat the scale a little bit, but the rough idea I'm looking at is kind of the size of a small car. And the angle I'm going to use will have the canopy not inside the room. And you'll mostly be seeing the bottom and the laser cannons on the front. It will be crashed through the ceiling cave bunker and the pilot's arm with the clutched helmet will be dangling beside the nose of the Y-Wing. I did that helmet on an earlier video. You can check it out up there. So I have to get the scale mostly right so that it just doesn't look out of whack. Ooh, here's some good shots of the bottom, and I need a few shots so I can figure out the scale. Ooh, here's one of Han in front of one. Perfect. I think I have what I need. 
Print all of that out. I'm going to use six foot for the height of Han and just mark out my dimensions based off of that. I realize this isn't 100% accurate, but it should get me close enough. I will also have to adjust for the angles of the camera and the parallaxing of the shots. I think I will just sketch this out with one inch equaling one foot to make all of this easier on me. All right, I think I have what I need and it's time to head outside, but get ready for something frightening and fashionably shocking. Yep, I've been doing these videos for a year and still wearing socks and flip-flops. You know, <laughs> I would never do this out in public in my defense. I'm just in and out of my shop, my build room, and the office, and I just don't like going barefooted in my office on the hardwood floor because it could be a whole lot cleaner, and I have these little bits of metal and stuff, and it hurts my tender feet. <laughs> and, and the wood is cold. <laughs> anyway, so I just slip on flip-flops on and off. I need some sort of outdoor indoors slippers, I know. I'm off on a tangent again, over explaining my terrible footwear choices. All right, I'm gonna move on. I am drawing out my shape on the driveway in chalk and I will just build on my chalk blueprint. When I did framing on the construction site, this is pretty much how we framed out houses. I'm just chalking out the plan and making adjustments for how I'm going to cheat the dimensions just a little bit. I don't want this to be heavy, so I'm going to rip some scrap two by fours down to two by twos and frame this in smaller lumber to save me some mass. All right, now to cut the sides of the nose. I want a 45 degree angle and to curve at the bottom. The top of the ship juts out just a little bit more than the bottom. So I'm going to cut this with a jigsaw and this isn't my favorite tool. And with the magic of editing, here are two of them. One will go like this on each side, and I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to skin the ship with, something light. Uh, was that a raindrop? <sighs> this doesn't look good. I just checked the forecast. I don't know why I'm just now checking, and it looks like I'm going to have a few days of rain, so it's time to pivot. I will come back to this, but lucky for me, this package just arrived, and the mailman Got to see my super stylish shoe wear. <laughs> this is an unfinished wall panel from Kelly Stern of Props and Villainy. I know Brian at the Smuggler's Room has one. I saw Evil Ted with one, and they are amazing. He sent me this one as a kit. It's only primered, but I actually kind of like this color. Anyway, he sent me some build instructions, but gave me a lot of options, random parts, and wants me to finish it and then send it back for him to sell. Kelly is a great guy who I've done a lot with, and I am happy to help. He sent me a video of how it's supposed to be put together, and I'm just taking a look at it. I've seen Kelly make a lot of character-themed panels and color-schemed panels, and I'll be honest, that was actually my idea for this build, too. I was going to do a Shore Trooper or a Mando-themed panel since I have those colors from building my kits, but Kelly can already do that. What am I needed for? So, I have an idea. I've never seen a props and villainy battle-damaged wall panel. Maybe for a good reason. Maybe because... It's a bad idea. Well, today has been filled with failure, so I am jumping in with both feet. Kelly, if you're watching, you may want to look away. I'm cutting your pretty panel up. I'm going to try and remove the top layer of foam in the same shape that he had intended that panel to be in and then try and cut through the wooden box. See, my idea is to build a second inner layer and have some exposed wires and machinery inside. Again, this could be a terrible idea, but it's too late now. Darn it, this is really well built. This thing is really attached. Damn you, Kelly. You could have made it easier for me to ruin your perfect build. <laughs> All right, foam is mostly cut off, and now I'm just scoring the wood with a box cutter in case something really bad happens and the thin wood cracks or breaks, and hopefully it will have some of these deep scoring lines to break on. Man, I, I hope I don't ruin this. I drilled a hole and was going to try and use a hacksaw blade and that was a no-go. So I'm using my Dremel with a spinning blade of death and then using a hacksaw blade to get all the way into the corners. All right, I got it out. 
Now time to clean this up. What I'm doing is I'm making my own sanding stick with some self-adhesive sanding pads and a scrap of wood, stick it on, and sand this until I'm happy with it. Now, I need to make a new panel so that I can have the panel slash door blown open. And I'm making it from styrene so it has a little bit more rigidity and can hold its shape. Score and snap. Score and snap. God, I love working with styrene. I'm trying to keep the basic shape and feel that Kelly had and adding some greeblies, adding some panels. Now, from some of the electronics and stuff that I dismantle, I have this box that I assume was used to keep stuff off of the electronics of this board. I might be able to make this my exposed inside layer. The metal and the whole pattern might be an interesting look. I think it's gonna fit. All right, I need something else on the inside and I cut a piece of the electronics board with some tin snips and I will mount that to the inside and I would like to see if I can get a piece of that phone operator cord board in here because the pieces are just really unique looking. Okay, back to the door panel thing. I want to add some model pieces to it so that it looks a little bit more like Kelly's original panel. And I need to add and glue everything to it, make sure it fits because I brought in my vise and I'm locking it in and then heating it with a heat gun to bend and warp this brand new perfect styrene panel I just made. Then I'll take a Dremel and add some explosion damage and damage to the matching edge of the wall panel and maybe a bit down here too. I guess technically there's no maybe once I've cut into it, I, I guess it's just done. All right, I'm going to mount everything to a block of wood on this side. Eventually my plan will be to glue and staple this block to the inside underneath and that will be how I attach the underside exposed electronics. Now to take all of these pieces outside and give them their base coat of silver, I really like that rust color that Kelly had primed it with and I might end up doing something similar for the top layer, but these are all the pieces that need to be silver. Now it's time to mask. If you saw Garland's workshop video that he asked me to be a part of, the whole video was on masking fluids and I'm gonna do this with toothpaste. Check out his video and see that it really doesn't matter what you use. The advantage to toothpaste is it's easy to get off. The disadvantage is it's easy to get off because this will get a few layers of paint so it's hard to not keep wiping off the layer of toothpaste from the layer below and it's a bit of a hassle. That's the one advantage to using rubber cement or latex. It dries and you have to peel it off and it doesn't just rub off. All right, the next color is black and more toothpaste. I will add some in the same areas so that you get the two colors of chipping and some in new spots so that it just chips down to black. This is pretty much how I painted my Mandalorian Pre Beskar kit, toothpaste and layers of paint. You just want it to be random and apply it with various things to keep it random. My last color with this is going to be a rust colored primer. Now, the fun part, the wipe off. I like to take the bulk off with a dry paper towel and then use an acid brush and scrub it with water and then blot it with a dry paper towel. And I really love this effect. Now, a successful paint job is all about the layers and I love to waste time. I'm going to mask out a box on the bottom that I will stripe with black and yellow caution. Now, the reason this is a waste there's a panel that's gonna cover 95% of what I'm going to do, but I think it will make it look like this was a build evolving device where it used to have these caution lines and this droid socket maybe was on some sort of a dangerous area with limited access and maybe that's why the damage, there was an explosion due to someone trying to break in and trying to blow the door open. Sorry, <laughs> tangent again. Here we are, masked and painted, and here is the caution stripes, and to wipe off the masking fluid again, and to have my damage caution sign, you 
probably won't be able to see. All right, now the droid socket. Kelly gave me a few options, and I think this one is the one that I like the best. It's simple, and it's really cool, and I have absolutely no idea where he got it, but Kelly, I want some. <laughs> All right, but this is aluminum, and it needs to be weathered, but how? All right, here is my trick. I weathered a ton of bullets from my Mando build that were aluminum and shiny, like this one. How did I get the paint in the grooves and the weathering? Well, I took a clean, shiny piece and painted it with a flat brown and a black spray paint. And then I took steel wool and rubbed some of it back off to expose the chrome look and leave the black in the grooves and a bit of the weathering behind. Ah, uh, what do you think? Just like the bullets. Okay, it's assembly time. Slide that into the juice lid, and let's put this all together. The panel that will hide most of the caution stripes, I painted that with a yellowish orange, I'll attach that. Now the blown apart door, I will attach with an Allen screw to keep that in place. Now, to attach the exposed electronics, I should do a bit of pre-weathering on it, and I'm going to attach it with wood glue, a bit of super glue, and I will probably add a few staples. I just don't want this thing to come apart. Now, hold that until the super glue grabs hold. And a few staples and attach my lights to the lights that Kelly already had on this thing. Okay, one last step, I think. The brown and black water-based oils to add some grime. Sorry, it's kind of just become my thing. If I'm not telling you some super personal thing about me and my past, I'm weathering something with oil paint. Just a quick side note, I think I know the first thing that I'm going to buy with the money from my Patreon members and what they've put in. I'm going to get an adjustable camera arm so that I can have more than one camera rolling and some different angles for you so that I can give you a better product. A big thank you to Frank Thompson, Rob Rock, Pops Props, Sebastian Butterwick, Cajun Jedi, Odin, Dan Krim, and the White Family. They are my Patreon members who will make that upgrade possible. I'm just adding a few more greeblies and adding some lens covers, going with the yellows to tie in all of the colors. Now adding some rust and some rust drips, and I also painted some tank wheels silver, and I'm going to add those to the sides, top and the bottom to add a bit of shiny chrome look to a few other spots, and I think I am finally finished. I really want to thank all of you for your time watching these videos again, and this is not the project that I started with, but it doesn't mean that I still can't finish something. I'm calling my battle-damaged version of the Props and Villainy Star Wars wall panel finished. Follow Props and Villainy on Instagram and find out when he puts this up for sale, and you can own this <laughs> this mess. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please subscribe and share it with a friend. If you want to join my Patreon group, please do that as well. And thank you so much for watching. If you didn't, just keep it to yourself, and we'll see you next time as we try to finish something.